All right, so we're going to move into these. I'm Season excited to hear about one. these. <laughs> You've seen the ads. Man, around. my Facebook used to get bombarded with the ads for these like multiple times in oh, a session. <laughs> so these things are not cheap. I'm going to put them that way. Mm -hmm. um, these are the Prism FX lens filters, and I bought six of them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> just because there were so many discounts over the holidays but yeah. like if you don't know what these are these basically look at what digital photography is today there are mm. so many details and everything is so clinical right. you know there isn't really a whole lot of character and this is taking that character and putting it back into the lenses in these cool fun effects um you've probably seen the youtube ads for them you've probably mm -hmm. gotten the ads in gmail or facebook or something like that and i've been sitting there thinking about it for a while actually last year i was going back in our emails and i was trying to establish a press relationship with the company mm -hmm. saying like hey we're one of the largest photo blogs around they never answer emails man oh goodness gracious so after a while i was just like all right fine you know what i'll just go ahead and buy them like mm -hmm. you know we'll we'll borrow them we'll send them back to you i have no problem and i'm like okay fine like let's establish you know proper yep. relationship nope so yeah. i bought six of them and some adapters the adapter rings are not the greatest i'm not gonna lie about mm. that i have gotten these things stuck on the adapter rings and i've sat there uh, i think i called you about it yeah yeah you did yeah, I was like, how do you get a filter out of an adapter ring? And you were like, yeah, there are those wrenches, but also like string. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so basically, you get these, I guess I'd say uh, it's, uh, this case is unnecessary. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> There's a bunch of them as well, too. Now, here's one of the filters. Uh, this is, you can't really see this very well, but you might be able to if I do this. Let's see a see. color. Shifting no, there. it's not actually. It's not really. There are like these cross sections like this huh. going across, and you can rotate it like that. I don't even know how you'd be able to. If I bring it closer, th this camera is set to face detection. So, like, right. I mean, yeah, no. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, you just sort of saw it there. No, you can't. Sorry, guys. <laughs> But either way, you put it on and then you rotate it sort of like a circular polarizer. Mm -hmm. And it creates like these cross sections. And I'll show you images later. But I'm just going through them right now. And then there's another one. And I don't even have all of them. Like some of the best ones are like the kaleidoscopic filter. It's mm -hmm. just you can't find it right now. Um, this one is basically a rainbow one. Let's see if I can do this. You can't. You can sort of kind of see. Yeah, you can. Kind of? Yeah. Yeah. It's basically like stripes going across and mm -hmm. they're all in different colors. So like, uh, let's say you're photographing a highway or something like that, right? Uh, some lights will be in like orange, some lights will be in blue, some lights will be in red, some lights will be in purple. It's really fun and then you can like manipulate it. Um, and if you were to say, hey, Japanese engineers, I want this. They'd sit there and be like, oh, no, you can do that in post-production. And I'm like, I don't want to do it in post-production. Right. Exactly. Yeah, we're trying to, we're doing everything we can to get away from that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. This one's cool. And admittedly, this one broke. Um, mm. You can see a little crack right there. Um, but basically, this little thing in between, you can put your finger through it like that. Huh. And otherwise, it's sort of like this weird sort of like magnification filter like that how bizarre yeah but it can lend itself to really fun effects and i'll talk about them a little bit more later mm -hmm. um and then there is this one that's basically like uh they call it the dream filter it's basically just like a really really weak like tiffin pro mist filter gotcha okay. yeah um we have a piece about the pro mist filters coming up i love those things like the bloom effect they do for lights and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. This can do that. And also this does this really cool thing. So I was testing these on the A6600 with a Tamron uh, 17728. And it did this thing in the shadows where it brought out more detail in it. And I was like, uh -uh. 
that's kind of cool brilliant yeah like i didn't think something like that was possible so i have to play with it more i haven't had them Mm -hmm. very long and then also like i want to go out and i want to play with these more but like it's way too dangerous right now in new york yeah yeah you can't be out there right now yeah so i'm trying to do everything i can for my balcony and within my apartment and all that stuff so yeah now there's another one um this one is basically like a split prism like those old SLRs, like the Zeiss ones and like the mm-hmm. Pentax ones that make it easier for focusing. Right. Uh, you basically have that right in the middle there. Um, and what this does is it causes like this weird sort of streaking effect in the middle, but it's very fun to use. I bet. Yeah, actually, this is probably my favorite. Um, especially when like, you'll see images later on. Um, mm-hmm. I was I was making, a, uh, what's it called? Um pollock paneer uh yeah. the the spinach paneer thing mm-hmm. um paneer is an indian cheese for those of you who don't know but i was basically doing that and then i was like playing with the light and i'm like hey this is kind of cool i got like this really cool awesome cinematic streak and now they also give you these really large things uh, let me let me sort of i don't know why one of them is really large it makes no sense to me <laughs> but uh for a super small filter what in the world <laughs> yeah so only half of this has any sort of glass and the other half is not like it's like that's <laughs> that is odd <laughs> exactly um but it's fun you know yeah. as i was saying like i don't know some of these are like 70 bucks i don't know if i'd pay 70 bucks for them oh, but wow. i have to play with them a lot more i will say though that i was talking about it with uh one of my friends who's a cinematographer and he's like no these are fun but these are toys like they're nowhere as good as like the high quality stuff like in mm-hmm. cinema. And i'm like okay but like comparatively to stills like i think these are fun still yeah absolutely so yeah no pun intended um let's share some images okay can you see my screen brett yes i can wonderful so this is that filter where uh I just had like the split prism in the center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, if I didn't have that, this would just look like the scene is normal. Right. Yeah. Um, This is looking into my bedroom. I was using the, uh, I think I was using the Sigma 35 millimeter F2, uh, the new DC DN contemporary one, Mm -hmm. DG DN rather. I'm sorry. And uh, I was just playing around and I was like, hey, this is kind of cool. And let me go to the next one. Uh, This is in my office. I was doing the same thing. I was like, hmm, let me see what I can get from this effect. And then these are the ones I was talking about with Sag Paneer. I like that. That's that's a pretty cool effect right there. Yeah, I do like that. I don't think I used it to the fullest effect and potential, of course. Even with this, I don't think I did. Actually, this is better. No, I mean, it certainly adds to the image for sure. Yeah, and I mean, uh, some people might say, oh, yeah, but you can get the lens flare by, like, just taking off the lens hood. No, not anymore. Not really. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you all that's been the... engineered out of lenses now. Yeah, like, you can sort of do it with Leica, but not really a lot. And then I was trying it again. And then uh, last night I was doing something a little bit more clinical. I hate doing things that are clinical um this is another one of that effect you can see like the split prism right there Mm -hmm. and you can see what it's doing uh i basically just shot the same scene over and over again this is right across from my apartment and i was just like all right you know what i'm just gonna stop down a little bit focus on the building over here shoot a really low iso and a long shutter speed and just see what i get and what what's up that's a pretty interesting effect yeah and then this is the one where like there's a glass on only half of it okay yeah so that's how that's what it's doing it's creating this entire like out of focus area and then some of it's in focus yeah i could see where that could be used to uh draw someone's attention to a part of an image for sure (laughs) oh totally especially like for a product photography or something like that Mm -hmm. yeah um it could also sort of be like that old school like google pics not pixel i'm sorry um what was the name of their like defocus thing when it was in beta yeah uh 
can't remember what it was called now, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it was their fake bokeh, where like yep. you had to shoot and then you had to like move the camera a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it could also look a little bit like that. Yep, for sure. Or like the old school Instagram tilt shift. Yeah. Um, this is the soft filter. Um, so let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. See how the shadows over here mm-hmm. are very dark versus them being brighter here. Yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah, so it's bringing out a lot more of the shadows. I'm like, I feel like this could be a really nice effect with black and white. It would be very low contrast, but it'd be very nice. That would be very cool. Yeah. Um, also, look what it's doing to the light, like the blooming effect. Mm-hmm. Like, look at all this. Yeah, that is nice. Yeah. Versus, uh, just for comparison, not really a lot of bloom there. A lot of bloom there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a big difference. It's still kind of subtle, but it's, I mean, you can tell the difference and it's just a really nice effect there. I like that. Yeah. And I think that for portraiture, I haven't done any portraits of it yet. Um, it'll really soften skin tones. And like, you mm-hmm. know, if you have some blemishes the way I do and some grays in your beard, the way I shaved out, um, <laughs> it'll, it'll make you look nicer. Yep. For sure. Agree. And you don't have to sit there and put like a million Photoshop filters on. Um, this is, uh, that cross filter one that I was talking about. Okay, now that's cool. I like that. Yeah, I think so. That's too. really neat. And notice how they're all different colors. Yeah, I can see that now. That's fantastic. Yeah. So creatively speaking, just imagine like a light is behind someone and then like you have like uh, the light pointing right into the lens. Like you'll get this really cool starburst effect. It's funny, you know, because we're playing with some software right now that has this exact effect in there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I would much rather do this in camera than with a piece of software. Exactly. No, yeah. I completely agree with you about that. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, and then this is that one where like only the middle is open. That's kind of bizarre. Pretty kind of cool. Again, that's kind of like that that Instagram filter where it will uh, selectively blur out the top and bottom of an image. Yeah. Um, I do like the double overlapping here. Yeah. I yeah, think that's, that's kind of cool. And I do sort of like this, but I do have to figure out how I'm going to use this creatively. When I was looking mm-hmm. on their website, everyone was just like, yeah, we'll do a portrait. We'll just put the subject right in the middle. And I'm just like, why? That's boring after a while. Like that's going to be the same effect over and over again. Like, right. I forgot how much this, uh, this filter was. It wasn't cheap though. Interesting. And I was just like, I don't think I'd pay more than like maybe 30 bucks for this. And even that's, killing it a little bit so they charge more for a field of it has part missing yeah <laughs> um the other weird thing they also for the most part only come in 77 millimeter because mm. they're like oh yeah you can adapt it down like it's the most versatile and mm. i'll agree with them on that but then in that case uh i was gonna say they should charge less for their filters but the fil- uh, sorry the adapters but the adapter right. rings are pretty affordable i think they're like 10 bucks a piece that's not terrible yeah um so you buy one lens filter and then you buy like all three adapter rings and like you can put it on almost anything yeah uh i think there's more than three i think there's like four but i forgot here's that streak one see i like that as well yeah i'm I'm a sucker for for stuff like that yeah same here (laughs) like some people might be like oh well you could just like wipe your lens for this no you can't because you're not going to get all those cool colors yeah that's that's what makes it it's all the different color shifts it's fantastic yeah um to to make this more controlled uh again imagine a light like right next to someone just having like that cinematic flare Mm -hmm. you know uh those are the end of them um i haven't really shot a lot with these again because I'm trying to figure out how to really use these creatively. But what you can also see here is it's creating this really cool effect up top. It kind of almost looks like Aurora Borealis up there. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit, yeah. Um, also, this area has come out a little bit more, but I think maybe it's because of the streaks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I really like it. I yeah. really, really do. They, I mean, they, they definitely are producing a... a, a product that's better than i thought they would be for something that was just bombarding me on social media yeah no Um, absolutely and like just to go through again like this is that streak filter this is one where it's just in the center um this is one where you have the cross 
star shape filter. Tiffin has had these before and Hoya has had these before. It's just, uh, they're sort of reinventing or better marketing something that's been around for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, soft filter again, pro, pro mist filter. These have been around for a while as well. I was looking for like a plastic filter, a plastic protective cover filter, just like mess up and like add character to. And yep. um, the only company that really made them was Koken many years ago, mm-hmm. um, but you can't find them anymore. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, this is again sort of like that faux tilt shift, only on like half. Uh, a split prism only in the middle and yeah um mm-hmm. again that split split, split split prism look so um looking at our comments michael is saying excuse me pro vist filter is amazing i bought a bunch of those in, uh, in case they get discontinued very smart man very smart man mm-hmm. there's two different versions there's a pro mist and there's a pro mist black the black is stronger yeah um michael you can usually uh buy old filters on craigslist for nothing split prism diffusion bought like 20 filters for 20 dollars before thank you for that uh tidbit of info i haven't used craigslist in years for buying stuff i used to use it all the time but Mm -hmm. thanks mike we appreciate that let's see if there's anything really quickly in the facebook comments uh doesn't look like it let me check again let me refresh that page um Nope. Nope. Uh, people reacting, but yeah, that's about it. So this is doing something for me that, you know, has really just sort of been lost. Like there's way too many details. There's way too many like clinical looks to cameras mm-hmm. these days. And I don't think it's all across the board. I do think that like Canon lenses have some character, like lenses have some character. Sigma lenses have some character, but also they're, it's very engineered still. Mm-hmm. Um, Rokinon has some character. I just don't want perfect photography each and every time. And I know you're going to tell me, oh, yeah, but you can do that in post. I don't want to anymore, especially yeah. now. Like, we're in the pandemic. Like, we spend more than enough time in front of computers. I was just talking on the phone with my buddy because uh, I had to burn calories. So I was walking around my apartment, burning calories, and talking with my buddy. And it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, most of my day, like, we used to be really active. Like, he would go weight lift every day and i used to go uh do mile long photo walks and like yoga and like cycle and all that stuff and we're not doing that right now so we're burning less energy or spending more time to have a computer and our devices i don't want to do that anymore same here yeah i want to really just sit there and like have fun like this one of my favorite cameras once again x pro 3 once again because I can do everything in here. One of the biggest things this did is it added clarity. Mm-hmm. Acros plus clarity or classic negative plus clarity. Well, oh, <laughs> so beautiful. So beautiful. Like, okay, you can go ahead and you can do the post-production. Okay. But the images are really nice in camera if you know what you're actually doing. Exactly. And then it also has these also cool features like, uh, there's time lapse, of course, but then there's also multiple exposure. Like multiple exposures are on my website, uh, thegampat.com. Personally, I love working with multiple exposures. Mm-hmm. I love the concept behind them. It pushes you so far. Like these can do that, and you know you, you know I should probably do that. I should really. Uh, I, I was originally like testing everything on the Tamron, the Sony, because I have to review the Tamron as well, too. Originally, I was going to put it on this and go out and be like, yeah, I'm going to do some multiple exposures. I really should do do that with the filters and these. I bet you get some great results with those two combined. Yeah, but I'm also now thinking about, like, the level of foresight. Like, it's even bigger. Like, I think about things way ahead of time anyway, but, like, you have to really think about it when you put that extra element on. Definitely. Yeah. Um, just imagine like with the the softening dream filter, like, hey, one face will be here, but it's really blurry. And like, here's another face and here's another face. It's like, I'd probably have to take it on and put it off and take it on. It, it'd be a lot of fun. Again, um, it's, it's the journey that makes it enjoyable. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree with you about that. And I think that's very important for us to remember. Yep, definitely. Yeah. Um, But yeah, man, I'm playing with these. 
I'm trying to figure out if like I'll probably do them as like a bundle post or like I'll do them as like individuals in Trello right now I -hmm. have them as individuals they'll probably just be shorter pieces like there's no way I'm getting like 750 words out of these right (laughs) or if I do like it's barely like a thousand words like you're pushing it um but I'm having fun I think that's really important that's Um, the most important thing if you're going out and you've got a smile on your face because of a filter then go right ahead and have fun with those filters yeah absolutely um a couple more uh, comments uh gino saying brett these filters would be great for astrophotography Mm, yeah could be in certain situations i could see that i could see that for the star filter yeah um i could probably see it with the the dream filter as well too yeah for sure the dream one i would think would be pretty cool yeah um, especially because like it kills the shadows a bit, mm-hmm. you know, brings them out. Um, Michael is saying, I think the clinicalness comes from post processing, not the lenses, over sharpening clarity, et cetera, et cetera. I agree with you. Yes um, and no for me on that one. Elaborate, please. Um, I do think that um, yeah, a lot of it is over post processing, but then uh, I think manufacturers have also gone to lengths to create coatings on their lenses that kill all kind of character out of their uh, out of their lenses, They're killing the, the CA and the flares and all of that kind of good stuff as well. So that's one of the reasons why I like to use some some older vintage lenses because they're not clinical; they they do have character to them. Yeah, I agree with you about that. Um, there are a lot of times where I'm just like how did onion bokeh become a problem right (laughs) like it's just been bokeh for years like who the hell sat there and was just like no there shouldn't be specs on this i'm like really guys exactly who's pixel peeping that hard i also think that like there's been this whole culture of photography to just sit there and just be like no everything has to be super perfect and super crisp and all that stuff and i'm just like yeah but like there's too much and like there's been this culture of just fighting back against that, you know, yeah. embracing the flaws. And I think that comes from the fact that you can sit in front of a computer now and you can zoom into 400% on an image. And, you know, people were seeing all those imperfections, but those imperfections are what give your images life. Yeah, I agree with you about that. And I do agree that they're engineering the quality out of things. Um, the, uh, I'm sorry, the flaws out of things a little mm-hmm. bit too much. Um it's crazy because like anytime we get in a lot of these meetings and they talk about lenses, a lot of companies will sit there and talk about MTF charts. I'm just like, who actually yeah. reads MTF charts anymore? Yeah, I know. Hardly anyone. I don't base I don't buy a lens based on MTF charts. No. I base it off of like being inspired, you know? Definitely. Yeah. Um, Gino is saying Tamron lenses for E mount are awesome. Yes, they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially the 17 to 70 F 2.8. Like that thing is nice. Yeah. Um, you know, 2.8 throughout the entire range. It's They did something similar years ago with a 24. I think it was a 105 to f2.8. And this is just like sort of the equivalent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at it over there. Yeah. Uh, was there anything on Facebook? Nothing. No. I feel uh, we can call it here. Five minutes early, four minutes early. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. I think we had a pretty good show. Absolutely. I completely yeah. agree with you um for those of you in zoom stick around we'll unmute you we'll have a little bit more of a candid conversation for those of you on facebook thank you so much for tuning in we really appreciate and love you uh tune in every week uh we will be here you can subscribe on our website you can also check us out on our youtube page and if you follow us on flipboard which i'm sure multiple of you do uh we're on flipboard tv we're one of the few photo publishers on there and also, I'm very happy to report this. We are very, very close to being the world's largest photo publisher on Flipboard. You give us like a month and we'll be that. And I'm so excited. We're larger than Petapixel right now. Shutterbug. Uh, the only one that's really ahead of us is uh, Feature Shoot, but I don't really consider them competitors at all. They're awesome anyway. Um, I go to them for a lot of uh, inspiration, but check us out on Flipboard, download it. It's a lot less toxic of a way to get your news. Uh, yeah, that's it, right? Yeah, I think so. Yes, sir. All right. We'll catch you folks next week. Thank you so much. Take care. Thanks, everyone. All right. I'm going to.